Welcome back, everybody, to an almost brand new RimWorld series. Why do I say almost brand new? Well, a couple of months ago, just before the RimWorld 1.1 patch and royalty dropped, we did a 24-hour poll based on your guys' feedback and decisions and suggestions, which we built a mod pack out of. So, over the course of 24 hours, obviously, you guys left me a whole bunch of list of mods, and it was absolute chaos and madness, but we, we built a working mod pack out of it. And that was the, the, the community remix mod pack, we called it, or something along those lines. Then, literally, like, three days later, Rimmel 1.1 came out and broke almost every single mod in that mod pack, basically, immediately. Uh, so, I've waited a little bit of time for most of the list to come together. And then, over, over tonight, we've been in Discord working together to try and rebuild the pack as close as we can. With as many of the core features that made that mod pack as cool as it was. But with a lot of other mods that we've seen from, say, the mod pack we tested out yesterday, with a lot of the mods that have came out with the Royalty expansion, and balance with regards to the Royalty expansion as well. That's obviously a key thing we have to consider. So I have for you the Community Mod Pack Remix version 1.1. This is available currently on Steam. Obviously, links to that will be available in the description. I'll put it in the top comment along with full install guide and a load order XML file so that you guys can very quickly, using Mod Manager, which works now, load in and get everything set up as it should be immediately this mod pack has approximately let me just double check here and then i won't need to stay approximately 186 different mods all chosen by the community or as close as we could get to having been chosen by the community unfortunately the original community mod pack still has roughly 40 or so mods that are not updated to 1.1 so again we've had to do a lot of replacements here however the series is going to be in theory very similar to how we started with that previous series now we are going to start a fresh start i did say at the time when we left off with that series that we would carry the characters over with their current stats and skills but given that there are so many new mods given there are so many new mechanics added by version 1.1 i want to get a fresh slate and there's another reason for that as well there, the, the main mod that's going to be the backbone for this series is going to be a really really awesome mod called the empires mod and that essentially allows you to set up and manage multiple settlements at the same time with npcs running those settlements for you people have always asked me for a multiple settlement playthrough but the micromanagement associated with it is a little bit massive um running one colony especially you know given that we played on merciless last time given the amount of mods that we're throwing in as well is a massive undertaking so having more than one is is obviously very very difficult the empire's mod is going to be the backbone for this and we've got all the other mods suggested by you guys the community to throw in that as well and along with all the additional new royalty stuff too i think this is going to be a really fun series so let's just dive straight in here and as with the previous series as well i have got a scenario set up for us um we'll just dive straight forward uh sorry i should say i've got a preset set up for a, not a scenario we're gonna dive straight with rich explorer because it doesn't matter we won't have access to all of this stuff i'll show you what we've actually got here why don't we go for and last time obviously we played the whole campaign on cassandra classic on merciless on reload anytime mode I'm thinking, why don't we go Randy for a change? Because we've got so much extra stuff here. Uh, Randy could provide us a real interesting change of events. Let's do it. Let's go Randy random. So I am going to go through all of this stuff fairly specifically. I'll put a link up on screen or a timestamp or something like that for you guys who want to skip straight forward to the gameplay. And I'll save all the explanation for then. But for those of you guys who want to play along, we'll get a proper seed going and we'll um, we'll pick a decent start point here so you guys can match it. So the seed this time around is going to be bow tie. That's bow space tie. I'm going to set the planet size to tiny because I'm a real big fan of the tiny planet. I think it works so much better. You get to see so many more biomes. Your neighbors are a lot closer. Your starting position is a lot more important because, of course, you get those immediate faction impacts depending on where you actually start off as. And we'll go for 25 cent globe coverage. Now, I found 25 cent is kind of the sweet spot with this many faction mods. We have all of the uh, Outpost 21's incredible faction mods being thrown into this one as well. And we want to see all of them. 25% is the kind of nice balance between the world being... Big enough to fit everyone, but not so big that it's difficult to explore or difficult to get from one side to the other. Then, as for everything else, I think we could always leave it as just the same and see how we look here. Let's dive in on the bowtie seed and hope that we've got something we want to pick. Yeah, that looks pretty interesting. Okay. Um, what the hell is even this then? Alpine Meadow. Oh, that sounds fun. Um, high altitude with rich soil, lots of flowers. Summer are peaceful and beautiful, but stuck up for harsh winters. So the winter temperature obviously gets quite tricky there. Um, average temperature 2.1. Wow, okay. Um... So what are all these various factions? We've got uh, the elves, of course, which we know from previous series. Got a couple of different elves here. We've got goblins. We've got a citadel. Now, these are new. 
for the new Rim Cities update that includes Citadels as well. And one of the starting factions is, in fact, a Citadel that you can siege with 20 people. And obviously, whoever survives that and whatever you keep from the Citadel gets to be your starting base. I think that's a really cool start point that we'll have to check out at some stage. Maybe as part of a 40k mod pack or something like that. Um, so the Empire. Where is the Empire? Oh, is the Empire not spawned in? Uh, oh, no, it's right there. Um, so we kind of want to... So another thing we're going to do this series as well is, is go against the Empire. They're going to be our enemies, and we're going to build our own empire with the Empire's mod. Um, I'd love to check out some of these new... What the hell is even a cloud forest? Okay, that's that's taken my fancy. Um, 30 out of 60 days time. Are there any more of those cloud forests kicking around? Um, we've got a sort of slightly darker green... That's the only one on the whole map. I feel like that's got to be our home then, huh? It's got caves. It's got... Oh, only half a year growing period. Wow, that could be tricky. Um, what's this one? Oh, there's another one here. Yeah, I like the sound of this one. It's also got caves, but it's on a road. And if we wipe out these elves early on, because bear in mind, like I said, our starting point here is really going to affect the difficulty. Because if we set down our initial starting point there, these guys are immediately going to be annoyed as us. And of course, that's going to kick up higher and higher. Oh, it says it's a citadel. I wonder if that's actually a citadel like the citadels added by Rim Cities, or whether that just happens to be the randomly generated name for it. So we are going to go back to our old community mod pack start point here. We're going to be playing with the nothing but fear starting point with Delta and Upsa, our two completely useless vat grown characters with no skills, no traits, no nothing. Because again, we are playing with the people can change mod, which will allow them to develop traits over time as they play, depending on what happens to them as we play. So I think this is kind of a really cool little mechanic. Um... And, of course, absolutely zero stats, but double passion in everything. Just to, obviously, that will make the mood management fairly easy, but the start is going to be very difficult because we're not going to be able to build coolers or heaters, power, anything like that is going to be very restricted. Um, besides that, we start with absolutely no equipment. It might be worth dropping in with a couple of guns, but you know what? Let's do it. Let's, let's just dive straight in here. Randy Random, Merciless. Zero and everything, no equipment, no gear. I'm asking for trouble. Now, along with that, we also have things like the Vanilla Expanded Events mod. We have the Sparking World mod that adds a lot of difficult random events that can occur. And they almost certainly will occur with bloody Randy Random, won't they? So let's see how it goes here. Now, I've we, we've very much tailored this mod pack for a YouTube playthrough. I'm not sure how it will play with you guys just sort of kicking around at home. And I should also point out it's not massively optimized either. A better modder would definitely be able to do a lot more with this mod pack. Definitely be able to find a lot more of an optimal load order. For me, all that matters is that it's not throwing any errors and the mods are all working as intended, which it is. So as far as I'm concerned, this is good. And again, full install instructions will be available on the Steam Workshop page. This is going to take probably quite a while to load because, again, we do have 186 mods. So not quite as dense as the mod pack we were playing on playing with yesterday. So, first things first, then. Democracy or dictatorship? I want a dictatorship. Um, for whatever reason, you start to pick elections. Just ignore that. The next screen allows us to pick our dictator. We'll make Delta the dictator because she was previously, if you remember. And here we go. Let's land. Oh, this is an interesting map. Okay, I'm, I'm already kind of a fan of it. Um... Right, so we've got some really interesting start points here. Obviously, we want to avoid the insect caves. We might even want to try and destroy that nest immediately. Um, wow, this is interesting. Um, I kind of like the look already of this smaller area. Bear in mind, we've got some fishing mods too. Um, so that could work out quite well. Or this zone could be very, very nice if we block over this. Force them to come through this very thin passage. I don't want to build a mountain base. So one thing I want to try and avoid this time. I'm liking the look of this area because we could build a massive fuck-off wall straight down there. And then use this entire zone and build our base a bit more recessed back there. And use this as the main base entrance with the road running through the middle. Okay then. So. What do we need to do to start off with? Um, so Delta. Oh, that's cool. She gets a little star because she is our dictator. Now with the colony leadership mod, dictators will have a, um, a particular skill. I, I believe any colony leader has a particular skill that they're associated with. So Delta Fear is a dictator. She's a scientist, which I assume gives some bonus to science. I actually don't really know what that's means for now not that it really matters we'll work that out as we go along here trying a level two scientist and also a dictator interesting um average point about this loader is zero right so i guess if she is a bad dictator then we're probably looking at some fairly negative effects for the colony just a just a guess we'll see what happens with that one right so we've got ourselves the regular sort of looking setup here um very akin to my usual mod packs that we would throw together we're using storage i normally don't use the storage mods but i figured we'll, we'll try and learn how to effectively set that up especially if we are playing on merciless of course we've got the bees mod which i've been told is 
a very, very long term mod. It takes a very long time to set up, but as someone who sunk hundreds of hours into Minecraft bees when that came out, uh, I feel like this could be kind of up my up my alley a little bit. So we'll check them out. And so it's a way to generate infinite resources in kind of a kind of a fun little way that's not just deep drilling or anything like that. So I'm I'm kind of looking forward to messing around with that one. We've got the human power generator. That's quite fun, but again, we haven't got the construction skill necessary. Um, so if you've got just completely useless people. Stick them on a bike and have them generate power. Not really, obviously, the most efficient way to do things. Um, so very basic turrets there to start off with as well. Um, if we go under the mist tab here. Oh, wow. Elder Brain Pool. I kind of know what that does. We're not going to be able to see it this series, unfortunately. Um, we've got a linkable mod there. We've got an operating table. We've got barber's table. What is that? Um, Villano hair expanded. Maybe it allows you to change your haircut. You've got to assume. Um, and speaking of which, I think obviously could do with a goddamn haircut. My god, man. Um, temperature all looks the same. We've got our leadership mod. So this will obviously allows our, um, our leaders to do, oh, you know, what? I'm confusing this with the other mod. Um, there's the other mod we've got enabled. What is it called again? Something along the line. It's, it's one of the mods that allows you to have kids. We've still got that mod enabled as well. So Delta and Upsa might end up having little Babby Rimworld characters of their own, which of course we'll have to educate. Come on, what it's called? Like Children in Schools mod? We played it very briefly in the last one, but I didn't really get to see too much of it. We do have Dub's Hygiene mod, which I've got to remember immediately. We do need to drink water, and we will need to obviously establish a sewage s system relatively early on. Um, jobs tab, we're using the regular Jobs tab rather than Fluffy's Work tab, because that is massively complicated. Besides that, though, everything looks relatively relatively the same okay cool right and then of course we've got a, an absolute massive research tree but note this time it didn't crash when i opened it there which is obviously quite nice um okay this one still looks obviously ridiculous but nowhere near as bad as the other mod pack that we were looking at yesterday um so we've got ryan's hospitality there we've got weapons overview because we've got a lot of extra mods vanilla weapons expanded just being one off the top of my head that adds some additional stuff that we might want to just quickly compare uh world map quests and then factions so a lot of various factions and our enemies. So goblins are enemies with everyone. What is this one? Covenant of Barn. Oh, they're orcs. Oh, very cool. Okay, interesting. So everybody's neutral with just about everyone else uh, besides these three factions. So we do have the dynamic diplomacy, which I actually didn't include in the previous pack. Um, mainly because it can slow things down in the background quite a lot, but I figured for this, we've got quite a small world. Let's get ourselves involved, especially if we're building our own empire too. Realistically, it would be better to build one surgeon up rather than... Uh, so what are we going to do with Delta then? Um, they, they have identical skill sets, so I mean, it really does not matter what we prioritize but i feel like it would be good to have a very practical character um affected by manipulation things like that so someone doing construction crafting and then another person doing the uh, the finer stuff so the, the, the intellect stuff the i like, like lumping my doctors and my researchers together that makes a lot of sense as well um right okay so i'm thinking or maybe dumb labor and uh, and and uh skilled labor might be a nice dividing point as well so why don't we have upsa doing the so we're keeping as a backup doctor just in case Delta is is fully knocked down. Um, bed rest will put to maximum. Hall plus I will also put to maximum. Basic for the time being can also go maximum and we'll get rid of those for the time being. So Upsa, you could be Warden. Then Animal Taming will also put as Upsa. Um, butcher Cooking I think probably couldn't hurt as well. Hunting Fishing will have both of them do. Actually Fishing will probably want to put kind of low priority there. And then we'll also have you do Construction as well. Um, harvesting grown will put us tier 2 for both of them there. We won't specialize either of them in that one. And we'll also have you mining. Then the more finer jobs will have Delta do everything. So drugs, fabrication, machining, all of this stuff. Obviously the, the more fancy stuff will get you to do instead. Um, that's alright for the time being I think. Obviously crafting too. We, it looks as if uh, Upsa has a lot more jobs, but they're actually kind of around even. They won't be for the early game. I should point that as well. Obviously, Delta's not going to do much machining in the first five minutes here. So, drugs will actually knock on the head completely. Right, let's do that one. Um, that seems fair. We'll have research as the lowest priority because there's not going to be many other jobs for her to do. So, she's always most likely going to have a chance to do research there. Okay. Um, the only overlap we've got then is harvesting, growing, hunting, fishing, because that will literally keep us alive. So I think that's uh, that's a fairly safe one to have as an overlap. Nice. Okay. Uh, what about deliver? We should probably have Delta doing delivery. I'd still rather her help out with the building, even though she's not actually going to gain experience for that. Just delivering stuff rather than doing research is probably a better priority to have there. Okay, cool. So when you want to put down our base, I'll be honest, this map is not the friendliest one we've had in, in sort of recent generation. We should take this area. Uh, it's kind of difficult to to contain, isn't it? Um, puts us very close to the map edge. I want to be somewhere more in the center. I am liking the look of kind of this zone. 
I'll be honest. Put, put a wall across there or maybe incorporate that into the base and put a big wall across there. Then we just got to worry about this big entrance area. I think that could work. All right, then. Um, of course, we stopped with absolutely nothing, so that's fine. Let's just get him to work immediately. So I'm thinking a very, very, very basic structure, very basic barracks to start off with definitely couldn't hurt. Um, let's not over cut too many troops down. I always fall into that trap early in Rimod. We also probably want to plan out the building before I impose. Gotta remember we are playing on Merciless here rather than... Normally I like to start on an earlier difficulty and then ramp up when we get into things. But I feel like we've got enough experience with a lot of these mods that we don't have to worry about that too much. And then I also need to set up your goddamn schedule. So I will eventually maybe transition over to our recreation schedule we used in the last Merciless series. But for the early game, it's, it's a lot better to prioritize work rather than mood. Mood is still a killer early on, but we can... We can min-max manually a lot. Oh, did I not send them to plant? Uh. <laughs> I was like, why, why, aren't they, why aren't they cutting these damn trees? Probably because I didn't tell them to, you fool. Okay, let's get that done as soon as possible. Why is Upset immediately... Why is Upset much faster than Delta at chopping those trees down? Hmm. Uh, oh, it's the type of wood they're actually cutting. That makes a lot of sense. For, for some reason there, I thought maybe they had some health differentiating differentiations or something like that. Um, oh, there we are. So, Leader Order Scientist Level 1... 10% research speed minus 10%. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Global learning factor plus 10%. Oh, that actually is really, really good this early on. Especially with the double passion as well. It's it's not so impressive with the double passion. Because, of course, they're going to learn at, at ridiculous speeds anyway. And it's kind of cool. Right, so now we've got a little bit of wood already. If we put a stop pile around that, we can start planning out our base. Now, I want to make sure the first thing we do is get down the hygiene-related stuff. So, where's a good place to... Oh, yikes. Okay, I guess we'll build over here. Of course, we've got to be careful where we build because a lot of this stuff just can't be built upon. We might have the road going straight through our base. Uh, yeah, this is not ideal, is it? Okay, we'll go for that. And then we'll also put down a latrine. Might put down a very basic wall around that just so they get a bit of privacy. We'll also put down the water tub for washing themselves in. And then we'll... Actually, no, they can wash themselves in the well as far as I recall. So if we just do this and put down a basic latrine for, um, for privacy... There we are. That's a bathroom right there. You can't complain. That is 100% a human bathroom. Right, uh, let's get up to work on that as soon as possible then. Let Delta do the tree chop. And the only reason I wanted to do that with both of them just, just, to, just to get the basic stuff down there. Right, so let's plan out a very, very basic building. Don't want to go too fancy with this one either. Don't want to waste too much time on this first day on stuff that's kind of irrelevant. Um, if we do 7x7 seven seven and then just chop it down the middle like that and get the world's smallest bedrooms going here, that's okay. And then this will use as, I guess, kind of a corridor. I might even smash that through and make it into a full-blown living zone in a second. As long as we've got the beds down and some sort of bathroom, we can go out and get berries for food, for example. So that's not such an urgent issue this early on. Okay. Um, beds, fine. End tables, fine. Oh, man, it's a shame I didn't make it one block larger so we could fit a dresser in, too. I might do exactly that, then. Okay, we'll do that instead. There we are. Um, I don't want to make these bedrooms too large. I'm going to remove this outer wall, then. What a what a horribly <laughs> inefficient bedroom we've got here to start off with. My God. Um, all right, let's put down a dresser at the end of each bed. There we go. That's going to be a lot of wood it takes to build those up. We're going to leave, like, 300 wood just for those two bedrooms. Um, let's forbid those, then, to start off with. Just get the basic structure of the roof and the beds down. Then we'll see what we've got left over. But, again, this this definitely takes precedent. In fact, shave off the corners. Shave off the corners to really min-max things here. There's your bathroom. Tell me that isn't pure luxury right there. Welcome to RimWorld. You get to shit in a dark hole in a shed. Fantastic. Okay. Um... Right, so how much wood are we looking at right now? Only 82. Right, okay. So when you've got that done, we do need to designate some more trees. I'm being very careful because I would love to go and get out some... Uh, get, get some berries from somewhere, maybe get some fishing done. So I'm being very careful about how much we... Oh, you absolute moron. How much we designate here. Look, he's already up to like 2.6 construction. Holy shit. Wow. I forgot how powerful a double passion is. Okay, there we go. We actually, actually nailed it this time. Right, so let's get these beds done. I'm going to focus on the beds more than anything else. I should really do the regular prioritize here um fine get a door on your bedroom don't you selfish shit right let's go for that bed how much is it per bed 45 45 okay we just need a little bit more you get to work on that one if they want to woo each other that would be kind of useful to do it right now so we don't end up wasting so much wood building two double bedrooms when we could just oh two single bedrooms or we could just have one double bedroom so if you want to if you want to work on that that'd be fantastic oh you moron um i'm gonna forbid the walls and the doors as well yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that. Let's just focus on getting this bed down to start off with. Last thing I wanted some sleeping on the floor and being uncomfortable within the first couple of days here. Um, let's go ahead and forbid those designations then. Right, try again, Chief. Good Lord. Aha, there we go. 
Okay, nice work. Uh, now I'll allow the, the the walls back in, and obviously that door as well. Hopefully we can get the structure down. What time is it now? 10, 10 p.m. How are they doing for mood? Um, God, rest and food is kind of fucked. Okay. Um, I'm going to force them to work just until like 1 a.m. I might even go as far to say whilst Delta's dropping down some trees. Let's see if we can find some food to eat here. Where are all the berry bushes? Also, why was this called Cloud Forest? I never actually realized. What was the description? Um, excuse me. Cloud Forest terrain. Apple name for the constant fog. Plants from more temperate area grow here. Uh, from more temperate era still grow here. Got it. Um, and animals frequently wander up the slopes to, from the forest below. Okay, kind of cool. Mountainous dirt road. Okay, so it's just a, just a fairly temperate woods, I guess. Interesting. With, with some some sort of tree variation. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff that I don't wouldn't normally expect to see. Got these sugar cane rates. Oh, are they food? I can't imagine they're particularly good food to jump down on here. There are no berry bushes. I can't imagine. Oh, but we've got pomegranate trees. Oh, okay, cool. Um, are any of those near the base? Oh, there's bloody loads. We're going to eat well tonight. We're not. How many trees was that? What? Uh, how many trees was that? Two? Fine. You know what? A couple of pomegranates for dinner. That's fine. How many pomegranates? 19 pomegranates for one meal? You're an absolute gannet of a man. What is wrong with you? Um, right, Delta, I'm going to actually manually force her to eat those ones. While hopefully Upsa finishes off the basic structure of the base. No, no sleep, no sleep. Only wood. Only wood. Well, preferably you get a double bedroom. Then we could save on wood by you getting some more wood. Okay. Is that enough? Are we, are we good now? No, 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 no. Upsa, I need you to fin not only finish the walls, but obviously we also need to build the... Oh, come on. We're one tree short, damn it. Um, let's go chop the bamboo. Bamboo should be very, very quick to chop, right? Or not. Oh, God, it's almost daytime. I might let them have a day of recreation then to make up for it. Well, there we go. Uh, let's get these roofs built. And um, we'll just make sure we've got the entire thing there. Two bedrooms. Done. Excellent work, team. 10 out of 10. Right, let's go ahead and set them to a day of anything then. Bear in mind, if their recreation is met, they will still work. So I want to focus on keeping them alive and well. Um, now, we could say harvest all plants, which would allow them to go along. But that will also harvest... Um, oh, what are those? What the hell are... Onions? Oh, my God. We've got onions and pomegranates for breakfast. Vile. Um, I want to be a little bit careful here. Oh, there are berry bushes. Nice. I want to be a little bit careful about how we do this because we've got the insects hive kicking around. And of course, we have no, we have no weapons. So if I say go and harvest whatever the hell you want, there's nothing to stop them wandering into a cave and getting chomped. And then a little bit more wood here just for, bear in mind if we, if they do end up, you know, getting together and we have to build a double bed, we can just smash the wall through and give them kind of a luxury bedroom to start off with. And we'll save on a little bit of wood as well from where we don't obviously need two end tables and two dresses at that stage. Okay, um, so they're going to fit their rest recreation. I'm fine to let them do that to start off with here. That's the last thing we want to worry about is them uh, passing out from overexhaustion. We've got a little bit extra food, so I've set them basically some designations here of, of pomegranate trees. You might see some much towards this. Yeah, there we are. So kind of the safer area is the map that we don't have to worry about insects chomping down on us. What I am worried about is we could have a raid right now because Randy doesn't give a shit, and we're well aware of that from previous series, so... Maybe we should immediately craft some wood. Or maybe craft some wood? What the hell are you talking about? Craft some wooden weapons. We could also go and hunt some animals, make some tribal wear as well, get get the cloth need dealt with. Try and kill two birds with one stone, or preferably kill like what is essentially gonna be a monkey with a rock. Um Give me Uh give give me excuse me. Give uh, Hang on. I've forgotten how to make bows and arrows. Craft spot. There we go. Sorry, I've played this game before. I've got, I've, I've genuinely got like 1,500 hours in Rimworld at this stage. You probably wouldn't believe it. So I'm going to queue up two of the tribal leather. And then we'll go ahead and queue up two short bows. Ammo. No, that's combat extended. We're fine. Thermal wrapping. Now, we, we had this problem before, didn't we? I remember talking about this literally in the last one. That was from like 5th element, 6th element, 7th element, whatever the movie is. Um, but it ended up being, was it not better than tribal wear? Did we not work that out? Um, what's the installation on that? Uh, am I, am I going crazy here? Uh, ins insulation. Oh, 3.6 degrees. Oh, it's nowhere near as good. Yeah, no. Okay, well, we'll stick to making our tribal wear. That's, I guess, if we want to very, very quickly deal with the naked debuff. We could just make a couple of those. But to be honest, for, for double the fabric, what it will take to make two of those anyway, we could just make one tribal wear, and then one person can be unhappy. I'd rather do that. That's, that's a, that seems like a much better long-term play to me. So we could make a hatchet rather than short bows. And in fact, we probably should do that as well. Um, no, it's got the crafting stat necessary. Of course, they don't. I'm going to make that as well, because, of course, the hatchets from... I believe that's from the Vanilla Expanded Weaponry mod. Gives us access to slightly faster plant work as well. It's like a 35% bonus to plant work speed. So when we obviously get around to planting all the farms, that'd be pretty good. But more to the point, if the monkeys get within melee range, we can hit them with an axe afterwards. 
What the hell are we doing? Killing monkeys to be able to strip them and turn them into clothes from a sci-fi movie. Wait, she can't make short bows either? They need two crafting. What the hell can we craft then? Just two clubs. We're going to have to make clubs until she gets to two crafting. Then she makes short bows. And then after that, she can make hatchets. Right, okay. Um, can I make hatchet in this? Oh, wait, really? Uh, why, why can't we make clubs? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Not enough materials, potentially? Right, okay, there we are. So 60 would we need per club. My god, that's expensive. But on the plus side, look at these luxurious bedrooms. Is that an end table I see? Um, you cut down right, it is. And it's normal quality as well. It's regular bear grills. Okay, let's get that built as well then. There we are. Nice. Oh. Not nice. No, I, I take that back. That was that was a preemptive nice, which I, I would like to fully retract there. Poor. Incredible. Okay. Um, although it will still confer the same comfort bonuses, so we should be pretty good in terms of luxury bedrooms here. Could add down some floors, torches, whatever else. What's the temperature like right now? 10 degrees. Oh, God. We need to get to clubbing those monkeys. Level 1 crafting. Great start. Uh, these are the same old wooden clubs. They've just We're just using the vanilla um, melee weapon retexture mod, I think it's called. Don't remember off the top of my head. Oh, God. Now we've got to club a rat. Well... Get ready, team. Our first battle of the day. Thank you, Randy. A trial by fire. Okay. Get your clubs ready, boys. So, like Shaun of the Dead. Where is it? Uh, Mad Rat. Trying to, trying to spot it running towards us. Could I open the tab and, and track it that way? Absolutely, I could. There it is. There it is. Sailing along. Okay, good luck, team. This is where we immediately get an infection, bitten in the neck, get an infection in the neck, and die. That would just be premium Rimworld right there. I'm not going to say that again, because last series, you might remember, I said, this is where we get the plague, and then we immediately got the plague. So I'm going to be careful about what I wish for this time. Right, right, get up there. Reinforce. Reinforce the flank. That was a hell of a shot. She's done that before. You, you, you can tell. The look in her eyes tell me that she's a woman who's had to club a rat to death before today. Incredible work. I think then we're going to need to put down a... Well, basically, some floor so we can put down a butcher spot, right? Um, I don't make this room too big, but we will... Actually, we could do that, because there's a crafting spot, so that will cut it off. Right, there we are. Um, I don't want to make it too big, but also we want it to be big enough just to be able to work into staff with. Let's do, like, that. <laughs> Is that okay? That's fine. That's all right. Uh, just don't, We just need enough room for a campfire and a butcher spot. That's it. Don't really care about that. And, of course, we've got the crafting spot as well down in there. Um, that's all right. That's, that's more than okay. We need to chop some more trees, though. Blocked drain? You've used it once, and you've blocked it, you madman. Um... Right, you can go and... <laughs> Not assigned to cleaning, right, okay. Incredible. What do you mean block drain? It's a fucking latrine. How do you block a latrine? Look at the size of the hole on that. Are you telling me my man's blocked the entire latrine up? It, uh, to be fair, he did eat 19 pomegranates for breakfast. So I'm really not surprised. No human digestive system is capable of doing that. Those things came back the way they went in. My god. Okay, my man, let's go and get that... Um, Let's go and get that scooped out... Where the fuck did you get those from? Did... Those must have been on the floor and I just didn't realise. I pray. I pray that the game didn't hear me that. Well, apparently they tasted good, so who am I to judge? Absolute luxury. Look at that right there. Um, <laughs> let's put down a butcher spot. The reason we want to build this butcher spot to, so desperately is so that we can butcher that rat, which seems to have disappeared. Sorry, did someone eat an entire raw rat? Naked, malnourished? Oh, no. Um... Hmm, that's not good, is it? It's not good. Turns out uh, 19 pomegranates a day do not, in fact, keep the doctor away. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure you would be hospitalized for eating 19 friggin' pomegranates. Um, okay, common common mushrooms. That's what we're after. That's what we're after. Go, chop them all. Um, I, what I actually wanted to click on was this citrus tree. Chop them all. Okay, good shit. I want to be very careful again. I've got to be very careful that we're, we're selecting a, a particular area to harvest rather than anywhere near the insects. Um... Harvest. Get them all. Um, we may have to go harvest to maximum priority. Otherwise, I feel like we're going to starve to death. Um, let's go ahead and cancel these tree designations then. And then we'll say, you go get some food. There we are. That's some good shit. Eat those mushrooms. That's, that's a great idea. That's, that's, a really, that's, that's really productive. Day one, chomping on whatever good damn mushrooms we can find. God damn, I thought that was a... I thought that was a friggin' raid then. All right. Alexios Galbus, a praetor of the Broken Empire, is calling you from nearby. He's followed by an angry needle roll. That does sound very angry. What the hell is an angry? Wouldn't that be so good if, if there was like a conflict with one of the modded items? And instead of it being a squirrel or a monkey or a rat or whatever, it actually turned up to be like an alpha animal. Um, so we are going to go against the Empire this series, like I talked about. 
However, what if we just, like, accept them and then club them to death? I worry that they might send in the cataphracts, but I'm going to do it. Um, it's into a Delta. She is our dictator, after all. Alexios, welcome. Join me. What if we recruit them? Could we imprison them and then recruit them? That'd be kind of interesting. Okay. Um, sure, join me. Welcome. Hello. Um, I can't, like, steal your clothes, can I? This is all locked in place. A thrombo... Oh, my God. A royal thrombo wool ruffle shirt. That must be worth a fortune. Yeah, look at that. 1,800. Oh, and it's of infinity. 150% market value. Oh, my God. Look at that thing. She's got a Muffalo Royal Corset of Diligence, which increases global work speed. If you were to die, it would bring me a great amount of pleasure. Um, you haven't got an acidifier. Do you have four psychic amplifiers? I wonder if we can harvest those. What if we've got a mod that allows us to pull those clean out of there? Remove pregnancy with two medicine. Um, let's not go down that route. Um, what have we got here? Downgrade psychic amplifier. Can we, can we remove it? Artificially impregnate. I feel like that would be a strange thing to do to your guest. Angry needle roll. Okay, what is that? Oh, yeah, no, that's that's not a problem. What an adorable little thing. Because it reminds me of the, uh, the the cactus from Final Fantasy. Um, or that Pokemon from... Pokemon. What's it called? Generation 3? You know the one in the woods. That one. Um, <laughs> shit, I'm... I am a Pokemon expert. I think you can tell. Right, come on. Join us then. Uh, what have you got? What the hell is a Vertigo Pulse? I don't think we've seen that one before. Interfere with the spatial orientation and sense of everyone near the target point called an internal... Oh, that's cool. Flesh creatures will become extremely nauseous as well. Flesh creatures, unlike any other type of creatures. I suppose mechanoids? I don't know if I'd refer to death bots as creatures, but that's okay. Um, Delta, we need some more of them baseball bat skills, boy. Get down here to defend Alexios. So the question is, do we want to club Alexios, or do we want to let Alexios leave and get the Psychic Amplifier? And then, to bear in mind, there's that other quest that comes up later on, where it's like, I'm a evil person running from the Empire, or I'm a rebel running from the evil Empire, help me. That's the one I want to go for. I want to try that route for once. Um, okay, get your club ready, boys. Here, here it is. Oh, it's so adorable. It's so adorable. But unfortunately, sometimes adorable things must die as well. Kill it, Delta. Or don't. Oh my god, she is an expert. Kill it. <laughs> oh my god, I hope the audio picked that up. The noise it made when it died was fantastic. It sounded like when I put my Furby in the microwave. Okay, good work, team. 10 out of 10. Still leaving in 18 hours. So the question is then, do we try... Can we, can we just recruit you? Is that something we can do here? If I just try and capture you and then recruit you? 60% chance. Just beat you over the head and take you prisoner. Are you any good? Underground of bloodlust bisexual. Obviously, bloodlust being fantastic. Capable of dumb labor, plant work, carrying mining. Oh. But your gear is so good. You know I've got to try and do it. This is some insanely good gear. And our people are naked. Long live the king. No. No. You're clubbing the wrong person. Go, get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Block him. Block. Bo body block him. Body block him. Go, 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 go. Body block. Body block. Body block. Okay, go, 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 go. Stop, stop, stop. Stand there. Stand there. We could just draft them up. We just draft them up. We're, we're in control of them. Club them. Kill them now. <laughs> I'm only here for your clothes. I'm so sorry. Wait, but they'll be tainted. Can we knock them down without killing them and then strip them? Oh, no. The Broken Empire are hostile. Hostile. What a shocker. Um, nice. What? We can't strip them? We can't strip them? Oh, you animal. What is this? Strip. Never mind. Wait. Oh, no. Okay. No, we still can't do it. Um, bollocks. Uh, that's annoying. Fine. Capture. How do we How do we capture you? Uh, hmm. Maybe we're... Oh, God. What have I done? The ritual, oh, oh, prisoner bed. Pr Non-prisoner bed. I feel like I've, I've very much fucked this up immediately. I wanted to knock you down and steal your clothes. You're telling me I can't steal your clothes. And now you're telling me that I have to tend to you to be able to arrest you? This is a backwards-ass system. Okay. Um, should just let him leave. Should just let him leave with clothes. 
<laughs> clubbed them over the head and then we're just going to wave them on the way. That's how our people say hello. We're a unique culture. No hard feelings, huh? Sorry about that time we uh, tried to kill you and steal your shirt. Damn. I can't... I just don't know. Is there any way we can grab this stuff? Is there any mechanic we can use to... To, to grab these things. I think it may be the character can, can strip themselves. Maybe that might work. So when they're back up on their feet, we could tell them to, with, with this enabled? I have, I have absolutely no idea. The alternative is uh, cheering up patient Alexios. That's so good. The alternative, of course, would be to kill them and wear the tainted gear. But given the bonuses that tainted gear seems to give, that empire level clothing gives... It might more than make up for the fact that we get the permanent mood loss. Because that was like bonus to learning speed, bonus to move speed. And that was just from the soupies. I didn't even check the other ones. We got obviously the cloth roll robe there. Yeah, the, the wall core set of diligence gives the hit points. Global work speed. I mean, it's just a 4% work speed bonus, but that's quite a lot. This one also gives, I mean, it's 14% net work speed, 15% move speed bonus, 118% research speed. Give that to Delta with her passions as well. That would be nuts. I assume when the shuttle leaves, then Alexios will turn hostile instantly because she's from a hostile faction. So what we're doing is very quickly building a prison, essentially. Um, if I turn that into prisoners and then leave her there for an hour, when she becomes hostile, I'm assuming she'll just immediately count as imprisoned. Or at least I'm, I'm certainly hoping that's the case. Um, maybe we'll just get a prison guard stood there ready. Zero seconds and boom. Okay. Can we now capture you? No, because you can't. Uh, do you not count as captured? Oh my god, the mine on the way out. Fuck off with that. Hey, leave that wall alone. What the hell do you think you're doing? Capture. Oh, that's so good. Okay, we still can't strip them, I'd like to point out. Still can't strip them at all. So I guess we'll recruit you then. I guess we'll recruit you. What an interesting start to things here. Imagine when the guy turns... Because obviously the next quest, the guy turns up and it's like, I'm running from the Empire. Turns up, we've got a goddamn prayer to locked up in a shed. <laughs> yeah, I think we're already... I think I think we're already on the same side at that stage, huh? This is going to be quite fun. And again, this is why I wanted to build our own little empire too, was to rival the regular empire. Maybe our final goal will be to destroy the broken empire. And I think that's going to be a very, very difficult endgame goal. Bear in mind that we've got the... Um, the harder faction bases mod. They've obviously got cataphract armor and all sorts of crazy crap. Psychic abilities up the ass. So this is going to be very, very weird, I think. But I'm looking forward to it. Patrons, chuck me your names. Because this is absolutely going to be a series we are going to need a lot of names for. Because I've got mods that make it so that raiders don't die. What that means is, A, we're going to have more raiders to recruit, obviously. But it's going to make the game a lot harder because... Raiders don't die. Raiders don't die by what I mean is if normally in the game if a raider is downed They will immediately die for balance, but now they'll fight to the very last bitter end However, that means we can also take more prisoners and more prisoners means more people to play around with Thank you to our insane top tier level patrons including Grimwolf, DKO, The Potato Eater, Chris, Harik, Bellex Rombo, Roll2D1 Games, Harry McGowan Gwen S, Aromatic Fool, Odie, Derek, Northern Bear, Caden Carter, and everyone else in the same tier levels on Patreon for their support and making the series possible in the first place. Thank you, guys. Hope that you guys also enjoy playing along with the mod pack, too, because this is looking like it's just going to be a fun little change on the regular reward uh, formula without making too many massive sweeping changes. Thank you as well. Goes out to Kiko, Tempe, Icy the Great, Shittle Dirt, Buen Gun, Jackson, Jessica Smith, Wesley C, Foosh, Bad Burrito 316, Derek F, Botfin. Sirthal the Swede, SuperNanny089, and everyone else on Patreon as well. Full guide and installation instructions available on the Steam Workshop page, so go check that out. Hope you guys enjoy this series, and I will see you all next time.